Chapter 5, The Blue Plans, Private Insurance, and Matched Care Plans. The objectives for Lesson 5 for the Blue Plans, Private Insurance, and Matched Care Plans. Number one is to discuss the difference between a traditional indemnity insurance plan and a managed care plan. Two, state the provisions of the Health Maintenance Organization Act of 1973. Three, explain the distinct types of managed care plans. Four, list features of an exclusive provider organization, EPO. Five, define and discuss independent practice associations. Six, name the features of the preferred provider organizations, the PPOs. Seven, describe the features of a physician provider group. Eight, explain the features of a point of service plan. Nine, discuss triple option plans. 10, state the purpose of the quality improvement system for managed care. 11, define a carve out and provide an example. 12, discuss the patient information letter and its contents. 13, be able to identify four types of referrals for medical services, tests, and procedures. 14, state the purpose of creating an insurance and managed care plan reference guide. And 15, describe the types of payment mechanisms used for managed care plans. Private insurance, the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. They were the pioneers in private insurance. They're the largest insurance company in the U.S. Approximately 36 independent, community-based, locally operated BCBS companies. They provide some form of health insurance in every U.S. state, along with programs for U.S. federal employees, retirees, and families. The patient's Blue Cross Blue Shield card is important in obtaining correct information for billing. It provides BCBS, the home company, the address, and the type of enrollment plan. Your Blue Cross Blue Shield carriers are independently owned and operated in each state, but work together as a network. The Blue Cross plans originally covered hospital expenses, where Blue Shield plans covered the physician visits and services. The Blue Cross Blue Shield companies also offer coverage through federal employee programs, the FEPs, the Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare Supplemental plans, and Medicare Part D programs. The first step in obtaining the correct billing information from the patient's BCBS card is to identify the BCBSA trademark on the card and then locate the name and the address of the BCBS home company that the patient is a member of. The address for claim submission should be identified on the back of the identification card. Your fee for service plans. The traditional insurance plans or indemnity insurance plans. The insurer pays a fixed monthly premium. They may obtain care from any health organization. Healthcare organization is paid each time a service is rendered. The insurer must meet annual deductibles. Once it's met, the insurance company will pay a percentage of the covered benefits. The remaining percentage is paid by the insured's co-insurance. Until the early 1970s, most private health insurance companies offered only fee-for-service plans. A deductible is a specified dollar amount that the patient must pay before the insurance plan begins covering health care costs. Managed care, it's a group of techniques intended to reduce the cost of providing health care. It improves access to and quality of care. It's a prepaid group practice model. The insurance carry contracts with a network of providers to offer services to patients in their plan. The insurance carrier agrees to pay in advance for services. Through the 1960s and into the early 1970s, the U.S. government became interested in several types of prepaid group practice models that use a managed care approach to health care. This was in an attempt to restrain the growth of health care costs for U.S. citizens.
some additional pioneers for that time was Ross Luce Medical Group that became Cigna. In 1929, the U.S. legislator also noticed that the work was being initiated by two Los Angeles physicians, Donald Ross and Clifford Luce. They entered into a prepaid contract to provide comprehensive health services to 2,000 employees of a local water company. And then another pioneer of a model health care plan is Kaiser Foundation Health Plan, which was started in 1937. Health Maintenance Organizations Act of 1973. It was a created authority for federal government to assist HMO development by providing grants, loans, and loan guarantees to offset initial operating deficits of new HMOs that met federal standards. Also, requiring most employers to offer an HMO to employees as an alternative to traditional insurance plans. The Health Maintenance Organization Act of 1973 became the movement to the managed care in the United States. The emphasis of the movement was to do away with the fee-for-service system, which rewarded healthcare providers for providing more services rather than for providing the appropriate service. Benefits under the HMO Act fall under two categories, basic and supplemental health insurance. HMO is a medical insurance group that provides of health services for prepaid a fixed annual fee. Enrollees must seek services through member providers. HMOs have evolved into many types of managed care organizations. They're accredited with keeping costs down, keeps healthcare industry efficient and competitive. Critics claim denial of medically necessary services providing low quality care. Although often criticized by disgruntled patients and consumer advocacy groups, the MCOs are credits with keeping down medical costs by reducing unnecessary hospitalizations, forcing providers to discount their rates, and causing the healthcare industry to be more efficient and competitive. Critics of managed care claims that managed care plans control costs by denying medically necessary services to patients even in life-threatening situations or by provided low-quality care. The criticism has led many states to pass laws mandating managed care standards. Accreditation. The National Committee for Quality Assurance, the NCQA, has built a rigorous set of standards to which health plans must attest and adhere. Receiving a seal of approval means that the health plan has met all the key elements required by state and federal laws, allowing them to participate in Medicaid and other managed care programs. The accreditation is a non-for-profit organization that accredits HMOs, its most comprehensive evaluation in the industries, and it bases the results on clinical performance and consumer experience. Your primary care physician or your PCP is used by most managed care plans as the gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is a physician who controls patient access to specialist and diagnostic testing services. There are usually physicians who practice internal medicine, family practice, general practice, or pediatrics. Both sides of the patient's identification cards should be photocopied because they contain important information such as the insurance company's address and the telephone numbers used for inquiries and authorizations. The identification card is given to each enrollee. It will list the patient's name, the member number, and the PCP. And it may also include the name of the MCO, the type of plan, and the amount of copay for various outpatient services. Your managed care systems all have a network of physicians, hospitals, and other healthcare providers contracted to provide services at lowest 
possible costs. Some common types is your health maintenance organizations, your HMOs. The pre pre preferred provider organizations, your PPOs. The exclusive provider organizations, your EPO. Point of service plans, the POS. Physicians provider groups, the PPGs. Triple option health plans. Provider sponsored organizations and consumer directed health plans. Health maintenance organizations, your HMO, is a specified health services that are rendered by providers to enrolled groups of persons. Its fixed periodic payments on behalf of the enrollees are made in advance to providers. And there are several types of models. You've got your staff model, the group practice model, network health maintenance organizations, the independent practice associations model, the IPAs, and your direct contract model. The staff model, our physicians are employed by the HMO. They're paid on a salary basis, and then we receive bonuses or incentive payments. Most employee physicians of various specialties. Then your group practice model, HMO contracts with multi-specialty physician group practices, and the physician employed by the group practice, not the HMO. In the group practice model, the HMO's physicians work for a salary, but it is paid by their own independent group and not by the administrations of the health plan. The network health maintenance organization. In a network HMO model, the provider of service is paid at a capitation amount for each HMO patient, regardless of whether the patient is actually seen by the physician in any given month. In an independent or individual practice association model, physicians are not employees and are not paid salaries. Instead, they are paid for their services on a capitation of fee-for-service basis out of the funds drawn from the premiums collected from the subscriber, union, or corporation by an organization that markets the health plan. The IPA usually withholds a portion of the capitation to cover operating costs for risk sharing and incentive purposes. And it can be treated by HMO and non HMO patients. The direct contract model the HMO contract directly with the physician's practices, recruits broad panel of services providers, including primary care and specialist physicians and the physicians are compensated on a fee-for-service or a capitation basis. The preferred provider organizations. Occasionally, the PPO pays 100% of the care of cost, but most do not. As with major medical policies, coinsurance requires the patients to pay 20 to 25% of the allowable amount up to the certain point and then the PPO pays 80 to 100% of the balance. The PPO contracts with groups of providers, which are known as being preferred. The PPO members have freedom to choose any physician or hospital, but they receive a higher level of benefits if the preferred providers are used. They usually have coinsurance requirements and deductibles, and they may include predetermination of benefits, fee limits, quality control, and utilization review. Your exclusive provider organizations, your EPOs, is a type of managed care plan that combines features of the HMO and PPOs. The features are similar to HMO by enrolled populations, the limited provider panels, having gatekeepers, utilization management, the capitated provider reimbursement, and the authorization system. And then it also features are similar to the PPO by being a flexible benefit design, negotiated fees, and fee-for-service payments. Technically, May HMOs can be considered EPOs. However, EPOs are regulated under insurance statutes rather than federal and state HMO regulations. The employers agree to not contract with any other plan 
the member must choose a medical care from the network of providers, certain exceptions for emergency or out of area services, and the patient is generally not reimbursed for care outside of the network. The point of service plans the POS. The POS plans may also pr provide non-participating benefits through a supplemental major medical policy. The key advantage of the POS programs is the combination of HMO style cost management and the PPO style freedom of choice. They have a network of providers that give insurance company or employer discounts on services. The members choose a primary care physician who manages specialty care and referrals. And it allows individuals to choose services for a participating or non-participating provider. There are different benefit levels, high level of benefits if they use the program of network providers, and a higher deductible or co-insurance for out-of-network services. The physician provider groups. In a physician provider group, the sideline business do not pay dividends but provide income to make future assessments to participating physicians unnecessary. The physician turns over a small percentage of their income to the PPG for expenses. The patient calls one telephone number to make an appointment and the billing is done in one location. It is physician owned, unlike the IPAs. It gives the flexibility to deal with all types of contract medicine still offers packages to business groups, unions, and the public. The IPA is under contract to an HMO and a broker or provider in a PPO that contracts with hospitals and physicians to market services. There are joint ventures with hospitals, labs, etc. These combining services cuts down on costs of running a business and allows physicians to retain individual practices. The Triptral Option Plans. Members choose from HMOs, PPOs, or traditional indemnity insurance. The members can change plans. They incorporate cost containment measures, and there is pre-certification for hospital admission, hospital stays, and second surgical opinions. The provider-sponsored organizations. There are many health systems are developing strategies to establish or expand their own health plan that represent a move away from the traditional fee-for-service care to value-based care. Your managed care plan that is owned and operated by a hospital and provider group instead of an insurance company. And they are gaining much popularity and growing in numbers. The consumer directed health plans, also known as high deductible plans, they are becoming more common and more economical health insurance options. The shift of more of the payment responsibility to the plan member that these patients will require either large deductibles and then once that large deductible is meant, the insurance benefits begin. Medical review. The Quality Improvement System for Managed Care, the QISMC, adopts a broad definition of quality to include the measurement of health outcomes, consumer satisfaction, accountability of MCOs for achieving ongoing quality of improvements that are needed for the intervention to achieve this improvement and the importance of data collection, analysis, and reporting. It provides an oversight and ensures accountability of managed care plans using measurable standards. Utilization review of management. Techniques are used to manage health care costs. If medical care tests or procedures are denied, the patient must be informed of the need for the denied service and the risk of not having it. The written reasons for the denial let the patient know his or her rights to receive the service and obligation to pay before obtaining such services. 
is by a case-by-case -case assessment, which will be assessed by the appropriateness of care and the medical necessity of services and or procedures. They will review how providers use medical care resources. The emphasis is placed on seeing high volume of patients in performance-based reimbursement systems. There is something called churning, that is for the, the physician sees patients more than medically necessary, and it's increased revenue through increased services. Turfing is sickest, high cost patients are transferred, and the provider appears to be a low utilizer. Buffing makes the practice look justifiable to the plan. The management of plans, the contracts, they must consider financial implications to organization's total revenue stream. It should have provisions to lead to positive working relationships with payers, provide quality improvement strategies, and result in a higher level of patient satisfaction. And they should identify the authorization process for treatment, time limited for submitting claims and appealing denied claims, how responsive payer will be for processing claims and interest paid for overdue payments, and the process for adding new service lines. The contracts should identify authorization process for treatment, the time limit for submitting claims and or appealing denied claims, how responsive payer will be for processing claims and interest paid for overdue payments, the process for adding new service lines, the credentialing process for new providers, access to payer policies for all procedures, how new policies and procedures imposed by the carrier will be communicated, and non-covered services, excluded benefits, and carve-out plans. The carve-out plans are contracts that exclude specific diseases or injuries from coverage. An example could be a mental health service and or chiropractic care are commonly carved out from insurance plan coverage. Carved out services provided through a separately purchased contract at a higher premium. Reimbursement is subject to a different arrangement or rate formula than those services specified under a primary insurance contract. Plan administration, the patient's information letter, medical records, scheduling appointments, pre-authorization or prior approval, diagnostic tests, and managed care guides. The patient information letter should outline such insurance plans the health insurance care organization currently participates in some possible restrictions, non-covered items, and expectations for collection of deductibles, co-payment, and co-insurance. The patient information letter informs patients what is expected of them and what they can expect in return. If the patient neglects to notify the office of any changes in eligibility status in their plan, such as disenrollment, the patient is then held personally responsible for the bill. They hang signs in the waiting room, advising patients to check with receptionists about participating plans, and they file a copy in the patient's medical record. The document, if patient refuses to agree with private insurance or managed care policies, the reimbursement may depend on that such documentation. Medical records and scheduling appointments. To help with scheduling appointments, Keep on hand an alphabetical list and profile of all plans with which the healthcare organization has signed. Most organizations will require payment at the time of service if the provider's service does not participate with their insurance. With medical records in an ENR e system, the patient's account may be identified with a patient type that corresponds with their insurance plan. When scheduling appointments, 
You'll screen the patients to determine if they belong to a participating health plan. If patient is not in a participating plan, let them know and suggest they locate a participating provider. If the patient still wishes to schedule services, advise them on the organization's billing policies. Preauthorization or prior approval. A formal referral is authorization request is required by the MCO contract to determine medically necessities. It can be attained either by via phone or a completed authorization form mailed or transmitted via fax or email. A direct referral is an authorization request form is completed and signed by a physician and then handed to the patient. A verbal referral, the PCP informs the patient and calls referring service provider for an appointment. A self-referral is patients refer him or herself to a specialist. The patient may be required to inform the primary care physician. The patients may be unaware of pre-approval requirements. Carefully review patient's insurance requirements and inform patients before the appointment. Ask patients to fax or mail a copy of a written authorization, and it may have an expiration date. Even if pre-approved, treatment must be medically necessary or payment may be denied after the claim submission. If the authorization is delayed and patient comes in for scheduled services, call the plan to obtain a verbal authorization. Make sure you document the date, the time, and the name of the authorizing person or you can reschedule the patient's appointment. The referral recommendation must docu be documented in the patient's record. If applicable, send to the referring service provider. The tracking system. A referral tracking log is used for pending referrals. It ensures care is rendered in a timely manner and patients are not lost in the system and it should include the date when authorization is requested, the patient's name, the procedure or consultant requested, the insurance plan effective and expiration dates, dates of follow-up, name a person who approved or denied the request, the appointment date for consult or procedure, and a maximum two-week turnaround. If managed care plan refuses to authorize payment for a recommended treatment, the PCP will send a letter to the plan and a medical documentation to support the claim. You will also send in office and hospital visit notes, laboratory reports, x-ray reports, and after all efforts are exhausted, inform the patient and advise them to appeal the denial of benefits. A capitated managed care plan encourages PCPs not to refer patients so that they can retain profits. When a referral authorization form is received, make a copy of the form for each approved office visit, laboratory test, or series of treatments. Then use the form as a references to bill for services. All copies being used indicates that all services that the patient's plan did Ask the PCP or the matched care plan for a new authorization to continue treatment on the patient. The request should be generated in a timely manner so that treatment is not delayed. The tertiary care specialists refer to another specialist. They ensure recommendation is provided in writing. Follow-up is to be determined if the referral was acted on. Document if patient refuses referral. Complete all proper referral forms. Lastly, you make a copy of the referral form for each approved office visit, lab, and or treatment. Diagnostic tests. When verified benefits with a patient's managed care plan, ask if the deductible applies. That is, if a provider orders a radiolo radiology service that is on side 
and the deductible may not apply. But if the patient is sent to an outside facility, the deductible may apply. You match care plans require lab and radiology tests performed at network facilities. Make sure to obtain necessary authorization, allow sufficient time to receive the tests or x-ray results before patient returns for the appointment. Inform the patient ahead of time if there is a doubt regarding coverage or services is not covered. You'll disclose the costs. Patient signs a waiver agreement to pay for services. If authorization denied because tests deemed medically unnecessary, the physician presents the clinical reasons to the MCO's medical director. The grid or matrix of all private insurance companies and MCOs with contracts. Some practices keep this information in a three ring binder with dividers for each insurance plan. A good procedure is to include this information on each patient's data sheet when benefits are verified. You want to, it helps keep track of the many complexities of dealing with various plans and it provides specifics of each plan coverage and co-pays at a glance. Financial management. Your private insurance companies as well as federal and state programs typically reimburse using a fee-for-service payment schedule, whereas managed care organizations have a multitude of payment methodologies. The payments can come in forms of deductibles, co-payments, payment model mechanisms, the contract payment time limits, and monitoring payments. There's a state of remittance, accounting, and fee-for-service. Financial management, you have a year-end evaluation with the reholdings and capitation versus fee-for-service. And then lastly is bankruptcy. Payments, deductibles, are associated with traditional or fee-for-service insurance plans. There are no deductibles for managed care. Verify the amount of the patient's deductible and it applies to claims as they were received and or processed. Copayments or copays are commonly made for office visit, prescription drugs, inpatient mental health services, urgent care visits, and emergency department visits. However, the amount may vary according to the type of service. In some plans, there may be a separate copayment for the x-ray studies and durable medical equipment, your DMEs. Your copayments are predetermined fees that are paid by the patient to the provider at that time of service is rendered. There is a form of cost sharing, which a managed care plan or insurance company pays the remaining costs. Make sure to verify, verify the copayment amount and always collect it at the time of service. Payment models and mechanisms. The concierge medicine, which means direct pay, has monthly and or annual retainer fees from patients, and they grew out of insurance companies paying less and an increase in documentation or paperwork. The patient must fill out paperwork for insurance. Your cash only practices is not part of a network. They prefer patients pay cash, and some providers generate a completed insurance claim form that the patient must submit. Value-based reimbursement. The incentive payments are for quality of care provided. It's a part of a larger quality strategy. The hospital value-based purchasing program and the hospital readmission reduction program is instituted by the Affordable Care Act. And it's a positive impact on US health care systems. The movement from volume-based healthcare models towards the value-based care models. The fee-for-service model rewards volume and intensity of service so that the procedures and hospital admissions give more money to the service provider versus the value-based healthcare, which aligns payment and measures objectively the clinical quality of healthcare.
payment for performance, payment or bonuses for meeting goals. An example of a pay for performance mechanism would be a goal was to immunize 80% of the organization's patients by the age of two using nationally approved guidelines. If the provider exceeds that goal, reaching a higher percentage, then healthcare organization receives a bonus. Bundled payment and episodes of care. When using a bundled payment or episode of care payment model, a practice must watch the cost of services for the procedures or conditions and do not exceed the agreed upon reimbursement rate. It could be a single fee for all medical services for one specific procedure or condition. It can reduce costs for payers and increases payments to providers. And then the provider tries to improve efficiency and quality. Patient-centered medical home. In order to be considered for a patient-centered medical home, the team or group must show certain organizations and structural capabilities. For example, extended office visit hours, use of electronic health records, and e-prescribing, and patient disease registries. The single team member with coordination of care agrees to provide more services and are paid at no negotiated fee for service plus a monthly payment on per member per month and or pay for performance incentives. Shared savings or the one-sided risk. In a shared risk agreement, if the payer wants the provider to accept more risk, the healthcare organization can either obtain stop loss insurance or carve out certain patient or conditions. Another way of limiting risk would be to include a risk corridor arrangement. A corridor protects from high loss, but at the same time obstruct opportunities for gains. The provider-sponsored health plans. To set up a provider-sponsored health plan, the organization must have an insurance license and obtain approval as a health plan from the state in which it operates commercial, Medicare Advantage, or Medicaid plans. Such systems have responsibilities such as claims payment, customer service, and insurance reporting, and so on. Then your full risk capitation models is a value-based system, and it can arrange from fee-for-service and capitation to salaried physicians. Contact capitation. Contact capitation is a scenario of which occurs when a patient is referred to a specialist for care. A contact occurs when the patient visits the specialist for treatment. The patient is assigned to the specialist for a defined period called the contact period. The length of the contact period is set in advance for each type of specialty by the participating specialty physician panel and the MCO, and it may be tailored to the demographic and practice needs of the group. The average contact point value is determined by dividing the net specialty capitation pool or total amount of money set aside to be used for a particular specialty by the number of contacts in a certain period. The average contact value is used to determine the amount paid to each specialist during each month in the contact period. The case rate pricing. The specialist contracts with managed care plans for an entire episode of care, and it may be done for high volumes, expensive surgical procedures. The stop loss limit, it's a part of a contract if patient services are more than a certain amount, the physician can begin by asking the patient for payment. The patient's financial accounting record must be monitored. The contract payment time limits. Some states have enacted laws enforcing interest penalties for late payments for either or both private payer 
as well as magic care plans. Therefore, know the laws for the, the pertinent state. A time limit payment provision is an important factor to consider when reviewing a contract before a medical practice participates. Laws dictate the time limit for private insurances or matched cares to pay. The contract may or may not state terms of payment, time limits, and late payment penalties. And it can vary between plans. Prop payment laws require payment within 30, 45, 55, or 60 days. A new contact can specify accrual of interest for the late claims. Monitoring payments. The monitoring your payments received by all private insurance and matched care plans. You'll want to note if the payment is less than the agreed upon amount. If the payment received is less than the agreed upon amount, as stated in your contract, send a letter to the plan citing, as per contract, see page XX about the fee for consultation. Procedures may not be fully paid if the plan states it is not usual practice. The plan may remit additional payments if standard practice can be proven. If claim is not paid in timely manner of 30 days, you want to write to the plan representative, list unpaid claims, claims paid after payment time limit, and claims paid in error. You'll send a statement to the director of the plan notifying him or her that the employer's benefit manager or patient will be contacted and alerted. It may prevent the healthcare organization from renewing plan contracts. Take examples and statistics to the next renegotiating session when healthcare organization contract is expiring. While some states may have screening fees for emergency services and may or may not require prior approval for such services as defined by the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Consolation Act of 1985, also known as COBRA. Some states have adjudication laws with penalties if the plan does not pay promptly. The Statement of Remittance Fee for service paid based on services rendered. A monthly check with statement of remittance or explanation of benefits, the EOB. That is a statement of remittance itemizing services and indicates amounts billed, amounts allowed, amount paid, and copay. The capitation system is a monthly check for number of patients in the plan. Paperwork lists patients being paid for. Your commercials are younger than age 65, and then the seniors are age 65 and older. Always verify individual amounts. Contact the MCO if any errors appear. Accounting. Good billing and accounts receivable management software is designed to handle each plan and the computer separately and eliminate mistakes. It's a mixture of private and managed care patients, deferring co-payment requirements, co-insurance amounts, deductibles, and withholds. Careful accounting procedures are required, and the use of good billing and accounts receivable management software. Fee for service. Managed care accounts can be handled as fee for service accounts. If coinsurance is necessary at the time of service, first you post the charge, then the coinsurance prepayment. After receiving the EOB, post the adjustment of the disallowed amount. Overpayment should be shown as a refund or a credit. The year end evaluation withhold that's a percentage of monthly capitation payment or allowable charges retained. It covers operating expenses. The withhold plus interest returned to the organization at the end of the plan year if budgeted services are not overused. It can cover all services or for hospital care, auxiliary services, and specialty referrals. 
and must be tracked in accounts receivable and not prematurely written off as a bad debt. The capitation versus the fee for service. You want to compare actual income from managed care patients with speculated fee for service amounts. Show where capitated payment received is adequate for services provided. The capitated accounting sheet for each capitated plan. It helps organizations assess the gains or losses of each capitation plan. Bankruptcy. Private insurance or MCO required to pay all bills incurred prior to filing Chapter 11. Healthcare organizations under contract with the insurance plan are obligated to honor their contract commitments. If the contract expires in clauses, they may be required to continue accepting patients depending on the contract provisions. Some clauses allow a healthcare organization to withdraw from seeing patients or leave if the insurance plan is in bankruptcy proceeding for more than four months. However, bankruptcy courts have broad powers to prevent physicians from leaving insurance plan in bankruptcy proceedings if the court deems such actions to be detrimental to the rehabilitation of the debtor. The another entity may take over and pay all bills incurred after the filing. For payments treated before filing, the delay in reimbursement may occur and the plan or the MCO must work out reorganization plan. Your healthcare organizations must honor contractual agreements. Some clauses allow organizations to withdraw from seeing patients or leave. And this concludes the lecture for Chapter 5.